what's up guys this is the dragon king if you do enjoy this video like share and comment down below and subscribe now let's begin this new video the next day at chenyang city shui yan came closer to him and whispered to him that they had gotten rid of the four families she then questioned him why they had gone to the city yi yu mischievously smiled and told her that the most dangerous area is also the safest and how they are strangers here merely stopping for refreshments Yi Yu and Shui Yan were standing in front of the Liuyan Hotel. Meanwhile, the elderly man and Miss Yan, along with their disciples, were nervously glancing at Ji Yu Hongan inside the Liuyan Hotel. Others were unaware that another disciple was cowering under the desk. Ji Yu Hongan exclaimed, Where is the little bastard? Then he told him to come forward. The old man, Yan Shan, responded hurriedly, explaining that there had been a major accident in their ancestral area and they had lost communication with him, and they have no idea where he is right now. Ji Yu Hongan exhaled heavily in annoyance as he told them that no one could insult the Jetfire sect in this manner. Ji Yu Hongan determined that the elderly man, as well as all of the disciples and Miss Yan, would face his wrath. Someone abruptly halted Ji Yu Hongan, and he immediately bowed and showed respect to the second young head of the Jetfire sect. The second young master instructed Ji Yu Hongan to be nice to their sister in law with an arrogant look on his face. Sheng Ting returned her attention to Li Feng, telling him that she is married and that he should please send her apologies for his brother and how they were never meant to be. Nonetheless, with that arrogant look on his face, Li Feng told her that the unlucky person was dead after being used up by her, and now she can marry his brother, and he assured her that despite everything she had done, it wasn't a big issue to him or his brother. Miss Yan wanted to yell at him, but she soon stopped herself, cursing in her head and thinking that if she and Yan Shan hadn't been gravely hurt, she would have killed them all. Li Feng mocked her, reminding her that she had claimed to be married, he inquired as to the whereabouts of her husband. And at that time, Li Feng gave her an icy stare, and seriously informed her that if she can't find him, she shouldn't blame him. As his disciples prepared to fight, they drew their swords and the entire jet fire sect surrounded her. Miss Yan was desperate now, wondering what she should do next. And then the hero emerged, pleading with the hotel's manager to give him the best room. Everyone was surprised except Miss Yan, who was delighted to see him and informed everyone that he was her husband. Yi Yu was surprised to see Miss Yan here. In a fast movement, the elderly man bowed in front of him and pretended to cry, telling Yi Yu that they had been looking for him everywhere and that he thought he was dead, he pretended to be concerned about him once more, and also pretended that nothing had occurred when he tried to kill him a few days earlier. Yi Yu was sweating bullets, and was perplexed as to what was going on, because he knew the old man would never be so sweet to him all of a sudden. Yan Shan, yelled at Ji Yu Hongan and Li Feng, this is Miss Yan's husband, and he yelled at everyone to let her go right now. Yi Yu was perplexed, and Shui Yan was anxious. Ji Yu Hongan and Li Feng were upset as Li Feng yelled angrily, that he dared to compete with his brother for Miss Yan, and Li Feng vowed to him that he would die today. Yi Yu was taken aback, not knowing what was going on, but after a few moments, he realized what the old guy had done again. He was outraged, screaming in his head that the old bastard had duped him yet again. Yi Yu kicked the old man in wrath yelling that he had left him behind and fled away by himself, and he questioned him about his loyalty. The old guy recovered from the kick and yelled at Yi Yu, how dare he kick him, he also threatened to murder him. When they began to battle, Yi Yu yelled that if he died, Miss Yan would become a widow. As the hero cursed at him, threatening to kill him, Ji Yu Hongan and Li Feng were both dumbfounded, unsure what to make of what they were witnessing. Yi Yu yelled at the old guy after beating him that if he hit him again, he would tell them the truth. The old guy, battered and bruised, assumed that this young jerk was plotting a personal vendetta against him. Miss Yan raised her hand, telling him that's enough. After hearing this, the hero became enraged and questioned her, what enough? He inquired, where are her manners? And she has the audacity to yell at him. His spouse asked her again if she wanted to be spanked. Miss Yan was speechless when Yi Yu yelled at her like that. Miss Yan reddened as Yi Yu approached her, and she began asking him what he wanted. The hero began to slap her as he said that she continued to yell at him since she didn't care about him in an emergency, 
and how a true couple is a pair of birds from the same forest, and when calamity strikes, they fly apart. Everyone was stunned since all of the disciples were aware that something had gone wrong, and they looked to Li Feng, expecting him to act, but he did not. Miss Yan begged Yi Yu to let her go, as the hero was having far too much fun now that he was no longer angry. Yi Yu grinned and asked her what she should name him, and he said, her darling, and how he intends to spank her until she realizes her error. Miss Yan felt ashamed when he informed her that she should say, darling, it's my fault. Miss Yan sneered at Yi Yu after he finished spanking her, but Yi Yu ignored her and smiled brightly, telling her that now that she has accepted her error, he will forgive her. Miss Yan was enraged and called him a jerk. Yi Yu then approached all of the men present and apologized for bothering them, like he did for his wife. Li Feng questioned Shui Yan, asking if he was Yan Shengying's husband. He asked Yi Yu who this woman was, pointing to Shui Yan. Shui Yan was perplexed. Yi Yu hugged Shui Yan and brought her closer to him, telling Li Feng that it's natural for a man to have some lovers, and it's not a huge thing for him. Shui Yan grinned awkwardly, paused briefly, and agreed that it was normal. He was pinched by the blonde, but he chuckled in pain, as he questioned Li Feng if he was envious. Li Feng grinned and told Yi Yu that he is such a womanizer and that he doesn't know how long he will be able to enjoy it, and he ordered Ji Yu Hong An to murder him. Ji Yu Hong An agreed as he used his powers and a fire snake hissed at Yi Yu. The old man realized that this was the primary stage of spiritual level, Shengting cursed realizing that Yi Yu was in danger, the old man exclaimed. Li Feng stared coldly at Miss Yan, telling her that he didn't care if she was married or not, and that if her husband died, what justification could she make? Ji Yu Hong An charged at the hero, ready to punch him, as Ji Yu Hong An yelled that he would pay the price for that day's dishonor with his life. Yi Yu simply smiled. He grinned after a few seconds and told Ji Yu Hong An extremely well, and Ji Yu Hong An was taken aback, asking, What? Yi Yu grinned furiously and aimed his hand at Ji Yu Hong An, shouting that he would use him to test his strength. Yi Yu's palm technique smacked into Ji Yu Hong An's face, and he flew away, smacking into the wall, knocking him unconscious. Everyone was stunned because they couldn't think Ji Yu Hong An could be destroyed with a single strike. Li Feng was astounded as well, wondering how he had become so powerful. Miss Yan and the old man were both startled that Yi Yu had mastered a martial arts skill, and they both wondered when he learned it. Yi Yu laughed as he exclaimed, I am strong. As they all tried to sneak away, Li Feng and his disciples realized that this was not good and that it was time for them to leave. However, before they could sneak away, Yi Yu noticed them and questioned them with a deadly tone, as he asked them if they wanted to escape, all of them cursed as they realized they had been caught, Yi Yu smiled, and he pointed his palm at them, as fire surrounded his palm, as he told them that he had a surprise for them, Li Feng and his disciples were sweating bullets now in fear. Yi Yu blasted them all away, as evidenced by the burning of some of their clothes, and Li Feng coughed up blood. As people stared, Li Feng and all of his disciples were knocked out. Some of them even laughed at them, wondering why those people were flashing their buttocks. Someone in the crowd, who I believe is gay, shouted at them, asking whether they seen it. He told them all what a white ass. I really didn't want to say this. Li Feng and his disciples stood up and fled as Li Feng yelled at Yi Yu, telling him that this was not over and calling him a bastard. Miss Yan advised Yan Shan firmly that they needed to leave as soon as possible, and that she was certain Li Feng would seek vengeance. Yan Shan glared fiercely at Yi Yu, yelling at him that it was too late, and that this hotel was surrounded by them. Yi Yu simply waved his hand at them, telling them not to be afraid because he was here. Shengting informed Yi Yu that the Jet Fire Sect has a powerful man in the final stage of spiritual development who is nearby. She informed him that this man was in charge of security and that his guardian spirit was a python. Shengting took his hand in his, and Yi Yu whispered softly, stating that because they couldn't flee. He grinned warmly and suggested that they have sex tonight because they couldn't die with regrets. Miss Yan punched him in the head, and Yi Yu cried silently. He questioned her why she was so aggressive, but Miss Yan didn't care because she asked him if he could be more serious. 
when Shui Yan approached Yi Yu and told him that there was a stage difference between him and the first master of the Jet Fire sect, the beautiful blonde advised that if he could conjure a guardian spirit, he might be able to battle him. And it's only because the time is ticking. The hero clenched his fist and smiled, telling her not to worry and that he would be able to conjure an invisible guardian spirit in half a day. Shui Yan thought to herself that it was unfortunate that she had sealed her powers, because she would summon a holy beast guardian spirit to give him enough time, but she can't have any more. Yi Yu sat down and meditated, a golden glow covering his entire body as he concentrated deeply. As he considered what he should summon to transport the entire universe? Shui Yan was concerned for him, believing that he needed to summon a holy beast guardian spirit. Meanwhile, Yi Yu was still focused as he summoned the guardian spirit capable of carrying the entire cosmos. A minute later, a blue slime with the word creaky surfaced. Shui Yan was stunned as she exclaimed, God, please, no, it's so cute. The slime vanished when Yi Yu rubbed the back of his head and apologized. He yelled again, come out again, and a specific pig from a cartoon emerged, Shui. Yan was terrified at the sight of all these beings. The hero yelled silently, the hell is it because this one wasn't it. He wasn't finding what he was looking for, so he concentrated again, and another being appeared, and he said damn it not again, and he did it again, and another being emerged, and I believe everyone knows what happened at this point. He focused once more, and then something else arrived. Now something new, as we all know, has appeared. Shui Yan was so surprised that blood flowed from her mouth, she couldn't believe Yi Yu could summon such powerful beings. Yi Yu had a look of realization on his face as he realized something and thought he knew how to summon the guardian spirit he desired. When he focused even harder, a heavenly guardian spirit appeared. Shui Yan was taken aback as she exclaimed, This is Chong Chi, the evil beast, and if he can summon it, he can be the dominant one. But Yi Yu yelled once more that this was not the one, that it was insufficient, and that he would summon the world's strongest guardian. And he calmed down and began to concentrate again. Miss Yan appeared when Shui Yan was looking at the hero. Who's there? Shui Yan said, turning around. Is Yi Yu in there? Shengting inquired respectfully. Shui Yan gave her a stern look and explained that he was practicing and couldn't be disturbed right now. And they both stared at each other. Shengting asked why she couldn't get in, and Shui Yan replied that it's because she is his new girlfriend, not his old lover. Wait a minute, does that mean Shui Yan accepted the fact that she is now Yi Yu's lover? Miss Yan was enraged, and she informed Shui Yan that she does not like him. When Shui Yan turned around, her melons grew in size. Don't ask me how, but Shui Yan looked at Yi Yu and told her that her crystal form isn't a huge issue, and that maybe Yi Yu will be more strong than her one day. Miss Yan turned around and walked away, telling Shui Yan that she would wait till he beat her. After a few seconds, an explosion happened where Yi Yu was, and Shui Yan smiled pleasantly, thinking that the hero had done it. Shengting stared back and wondered if the hero was truly so powerful. Yi Yu stood up, amazed at himself, as a fire aura covered his body, thinking that the first stage of spiritual level is extremely powerful, and it's fantastic. Shui Yan was astounded and excited, so she asked him which guardian spirit he summoned. He showed it to her, and a blue spirit guardian spirit emerged, telling her not to be afraid and to stand firm. And Shui Yan nodded uncomfortably. Shui Yan was worried because she assumed it was a phoenix, dragon, or something more formidable. As it surrounded the hero, the spirit guardian spread. Shui Yan was shocked to discover that it was a raindrop spirit. With a smile on his lips, Yi Yu asked her what she thought about his spirit guardian, Shui Yan, who was shivering in wrath. As she slapped him and yelled at him, calling him an idiot, she asked him how he could summon such a weak guardian spirit. Yi Yu was in tears as he whispered that his guardian spirit is very powerful and that she will learn about it in the future. Shui Yan was disappointed, telling him that she had just informed Shengting that he could surpass her, and now it was impossible. As he informed her he could press her, Yi Yu's eyes twinkled, and he's good at it, he assured her he's strong enough to press her for as long as she can endure it. Shui Yan smacked him across the face and told him to piss off. And after telling him that she had issued her a challenge for him, she questioned him what the hell he was talking about. 
and someone yelled for Yi Yu to come out. Li Feng smirked and told her what a jerk he was, then asked him if he could stop him. Li Feng addressed the man next to him as Blood Python and asked him what he thought they should do with him. The Blood Python responded, telling Li Feng that everyone who tries to stop him will be slain. Shengting yelled at Li Feng to release Shan. Li Feng gave her a grim smile and assured her that as soon as Yi Yu and her surrendered, he would release the elderly man. Yi Yu didn't care about the old man's life, and when he questioned Li Feng why he wouldn't let him go, he told him that he should just murder him. Miss Yan shouted at him, what the hell is he talking about? Li Feng was stunned, and Yi Yu chuckled. Yi Yu responded that the old guy had been attempting to kill him and that there was no need for him to save him. Li Feng thrust his sword into his neck and yelled at Yi Yu, asking him if he thought he cared about his life. Yi Yu chuckled and encouraged him to just kill him so they could talk about their business once he was dead. Yan Shan, the old man, grieved softly, thinking that after he died, he would seek vengeance. Li Feng yelled that they couldn't talk about anything, and Yi Yu prepared himself while he warmed up. Yi Yu smiled and told him that the Jet Fire Sect is quite powerful, and that he would have to hold him prisoner in order to protect himself. Li Fang's face expression turned to a gloomy one, and a spirit beast emerged behind him, menacingly glaring at Yi Yu, and he chuckled darkly, asking him if he was fooling with him. Li Fang's spirit beast roared and everyone except for Yi Yu, were blown away by the roar. Yan Shan exclaimed, what the hell was he thinking? Yan Shan had a hard landing on the ground and was in discomfort. Shui Yan was taken aback when she realized this was the Li Feng guardian spirit, a Mongolian wolf, a savage beast. Li Feng clenched his fist and laughed, telling Yi Yu that he had previously been injured, and that now that he has taken an elixir, he is not strong enough to hold him as a hostage. Yi Yu became serious immediately, and he considered comparing their guardian spirit, and Yi Yu smiled grimly and told himself that he believes he is the one who is not powerful enough. That's the end for now. If you did enjoy this video, like, share and subscribe for more and have a great day.